Uh, they've done a fair job. I, I think we have to be realistic, and I think the nation realizes now that tax incentives have some limitations. The government does not have unlimited amounts of money, and it does cost money to do tax incentives. So I think incentives for things like energy efficient windows and insulation are all good things. But the sad news is, and this is where uh, you know people may part company with me, but I think ultimately we have to tax fossil fuels uh, and then rebate that money back to the individuals on a per capita basis, and then that will uh, make it more economic to be efficient to move to alternate fuels. Uh, and I think that's more sustainable over the years than tax incentives because the tax incentives will just grow and grow and uh, uh, it makes it very difficult to balance the federal budget when, when you look at them as what they are and the reductions in revenue. So how would such a tax work? Well, in general outline, uh, you, you, you would announce a gasoline tax and to be fair to people who've made decisions like where they live and work already, you would phase it in gradually over maybe a 10 year period. And you would promise the American people that all of it or maybe 90% of it would be rebated right back to them. And so you would, for instance, get a rebate in your Social Security check uh, and your payment for Social Security wouldn't be so great. So what you'd be doing is discouraging the use of energy and encouraging the use of labor, both of which would seem to me to be good ideas. That may be a little complicated to explain to the American people, but if we aren't thinking in, in bold terms like that, I don't think we're going to be able to solve the problem. Our governor and, and the presidential candidates also talk a lot about wind and solar power and, and going that route with some of the technologies. Um, how big a factor can that play in making things better, do you think, in the long run? Well, I think the Michigan Act called for 10% renewables by 2015, if I remember correctly, and I've been a proponent of a national requirement that 15% of uh, electricity come from renewable energy. Then I think from the government standpoint, you should be neutral and let the renewable industries fight it out among themselves to see who can be most cost effective. Right now, wind uh, would probably win a lot of that. Um, uh, Plant-based energy would win a lot of that. In the long term, I think solar has the greatest potential to improve in efficiency and cost. But uh, th there's a role for government to set some general ground rules, and then the private sector can sort of determine the winners and losers among the different fuels. But we need to move to the fuels that aren't emitting carbon dioxide and to the ones that we're not relying on the, uh, the Middle East for our energy supplies. Jay, wouldn't you also say that nuclear has got a big role in our energy future because technology has continued to advance in other countries, for example, France, nuclear technology. After Three Mile Island, there was the kibosh put on so much of our domestic nuclear industry here. And if you have these advances that we can import, mm. we have a, a, a quite a different generation of nuclear power plant potential, right? Yeah. I'm uh, quite confident in the current uh, uh, currently available technology in nuclear generation. Uh, nuclear still has the problem it had even before Three Mile Island. Even before Three Mile Island, there were more plants being canceled than, than ordered because of the cost. But I, I agree with the government uh, bill that was passed in 2005 that's going to provide substantial uh, uh, financial incentives to the first nuclear plants, and then they'll sort of be on their own. But uh, the first ones will be more expensive because we're sort of gearing back up and getting people in place to do them. We do have access to the French technology. Uh, and the reason that I support nuclear mainly is I don't see a path to solving the, the climate change problem without nuclear energy. So, uh, and I, I think that coal right now has not been technically able to deal with the uh, carbon emissions problem. So uh, nuclear is the stronger option for baseline uh, production. There can always be controversy or resistance to new energy technologies, even something as clean as wind. Uh, there has been opposition, people here and there not wanting offshore wind turbines. How big of an obstacle do you see that public resistance to overcoming that and shifting more toward wind? Well, every fuel has the group that says, not in my backyard. and uh, I sort of chide some of the uh, uh, liberals and environmentalists for finding a reason not to like any fuel at all, and uh, that's not sustainable. But I do think we have to, wind for instance, uh, I would be concerned in a, a bird flight path if, if it was destroying wildlife, but again, technology can solve problems like that. You know, we can put in some sort of sonar system or something like that. So. Uh, 
I, I'm not too sympathetic with the people up in Massachusetts who've been opposing wind, but, but at, on the other hand, I would like to encourage the industry to mitigate environmental impacts. Uh, we, you know, often it's said, and maybe we'll have to go to this, that the federal government will have to take a bigger permitting role uh, because the local people don't want a nuclear waste disposal, they don't want windmills, they don't want anything. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Hakes and Gleese Whitney are guests tonight on West Michigan Week, and our discussion continues in just a moment. Our guests tonight on West Michigan Week are Jay Hakes. He directs the Jimmy Carter Presidential Museum and Library in Atlanta, Georgia, and Gleaves Whitney here in Grand Rapids of the Howenstein Center for Presidential Studies. Uh, Gleaves, the presidential election now uh, is nigh. Uh, what are your gut feelings about the way it's turned and twisted in the last 12 months? Well, I think some of the things that have happened actually in the last few weeks are so interesting because now what you're seeing is Obama pulling out in front and probably at the point of this broadcast anyway has an insurmountable lead from McCain's point of view. It'd be very hard now to catch him. If you ask people about specific issues, energy policy, uh, economic policy, just about anything but national security, Obama's building up leads in very specific areas. The overall lead, however, is somewhat less than that. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about that. Some people say it's due to the Bradley effect, Governor Tom Bradley out in California. Resistance to voting for <coughs> an African American. Yeah, exactly. But probably a number of factors uh, that play into this. And the fact is, we won't know till Election Day, and then the analysis will really start. But I think in the meantime, uh, it's been very interesting to see how this economy has riveted everyone's attention. And the, just what George Will predicted happen, would happen, people got their 401k statements and confidence in our economy and really a sense of crisis in leadership in Washington really ballooned at that point. People, this is really, Peter, I think very much a leadership crisis in addition to an economic yeah. crisis. Well, everyone knows that George Bush will no longer be president, so in their minds he is the lame duck, of which he is. We don't know who's going to replace him, so we, we do have this void. but. I'm curious both of your opinions on this issue that plays out in nearly every election where you blame the incumbent for whatever problems may be existing even though, let's be honest, a president or a governor does not have the complete enough control over something as large as a state's economy, not the least of which a national economy, to rightfully be blamed for its condition. Well, let's, let's focus this question a little bit on the energy part of this equation. See, I think George W. Bush missed a marvelous opportunity in his presidency. Eight years. He could have gone to his uh, buddies in the petroleum industry and said, look, I've got to be the Nixon to China on this issue. I've got to go <coughs> counter to what sort of the, the party wisdom is. I want to be the energy president. We need to be more independent. George W. Bush would have been the man to do that because of his lineage. His reluctance to do that, his failure to do that, I think really does give him a lower grade. Uh, it takes imagination to be a good president, to seize these opportunities, whether it's LBJ coming from you know, a, a South that's resistant to civil rights saying, I'm going to be your civil rights president, or the anti-communist Nixon saying, I'm going to go to China and open up relations. George W. Bush should have been the energy president. And historically now, I think we already can, can see why that would have been a very important and worthwhile thing for him to pursue, especially in the context of our economy and wars in the Middle East. Yeah. 